Let me just wrap up before I take your questions by talking about the obvious thing that you need to know about, which is why beer is good for you. Uh, of course, UC Davis is a land-grant university, therefore I have a project which is uh, dedicated to the interests and the needs of the people. And of course, mine is called Beer and Health. Because beer is the healthier option. On a program called 60 Minutes a number of years ago, they started talking about the French paradox. Now, the French live badly. I know that. I've watched them do it. I'm from England. I've seen it. And what they do, you may smile. What they do is they eat lots of cheese and oil and all this fatty stuff, so their arteries should be caked with bad cholesterol. But it's not. And they say this is because they drink red wine, and red wine contains resveratrol. And they always say it like that, resveratrol. And this resveratrol cuts down the risk of atherosclerosis. What they don't tell you is how they came to that conclusion. What they did was feed laboratory rats resveratrol, the equivalent of 160 bottles of red wine every day, which is twice as much as you drink. Uh, the active ingredient, not smiling, the active ingredient is actually alcohol. And it doesn't matter whether it's red wine, white wine, ale, lager, southern comfort, whatever your preferred tipple in the same equivalent quantities, it will cut down your risk of coronary heart disease when consumed in moderation. So what is moderation? Well, the definition depends on where you are. De definition of moderation in uh, Prague is somewhat different to what it is in Salt Lake City, let me tell you that. But I would define moderation as being two 12-ounce servings per day. And I say per day because it is per day. Every day. Do not miss a day. And do not store it up for the weekend. You can't have 14 on a Saturday night. That is binge drinking, okay? And rejoice in the fact that when you're drinking beer, when you're drinking beer, you're actually getting added nutritive value. Beer contains fiber. Beer contains B vitamins apart from thiamine, but all the other ones. Beer contains antioxidants, which molecule for molecule are better than the ones from wine. Beer is the richest source of the element silicon in the diet, and that's good for your bones. The next best source is granola. You choose. You choose how you want to get your silicon. Um, and, uh, but people still say to me, you know, people who drink wine are healthier. And I said, of course they are because they are wealthier, therefore they have access to the finest health care, and they jog. People who drink beer do not jog. They watch ball games and eat sausages. Hence, the sausage belly, okay? There was a study in Copenhagen, and they were checking what people were buying in supermarkets. People who were buying wine were buying bottled water, tofu, chicken, low-fat spread, lettuce. People who were buying beer were buying potatoes, butter, red meat, burgers, sausages, and cigarettes. It's the beer that's keeping them alive, remember that. <laughs> so it's an entirely, entirely a lifestyle thing. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy wine. And I think it's a wonderful product, but so is beer. And if there's one thing I would love to happen in this country, I think it should be that wine decamps from its pedestal and comes down to earth, and beer takes itself more seriously, but always with a smile on its face. Thank you for listening.